So hopefully you are all seeing um, an EndNote library again, the advanced EndNote um, example library. And we are going to consider now how to collaborate, how to share libraries, how to share references, because there'll be um, times when you need to work with other people. You might need to share references with your supervisor. You might be a research assistant administering references for a project or be a co-author. So there are a variety of sharing um, options. And the first one is to share the whole library. So for this, you simply go to file and, oh, share, sorry. There you go. Um, so that um, was in the middle. I just had a mental spasm there. I do apologize. Um, so I'm going to share this library. So I'm just going to get an authorization thing. Um, you can see that this um, library has already had an invitation sent to Marvin to um, share. Um, I can see that the permission um, was read only and he hasn't um, yet accepted. The status is pending. And here I could um, maybe remove the invitation, remind Marvin if I wanted to, or re-invite him with more powers if I wanted, or I could invite um, someone else. So I just saw that my friend Emma Nelms is present. So it's as simple as just putting in someone's address, saying um, these are the permissions I would like. Uh, what's the message? The message might be testing and invite the person uh, to join and be able to work with this library. So working um, with the library, um, if they have read-only access, they can use the references. But if I had given read and write access, they would have been able to edit references, add groups, and marked up an added PDF. So if you are working in a team, um, it's kind of really important to figure out who's doing what and what powers people need and just to, to have a bit of clarification um, around that. Okay, so now to imagine that um, you were the person who had received um, the library, how do you get to it? Well, it's this one, the open shared library to access a shared library. Okay, so that is one option, but the other option is to simply share um, a group. So the thing to remember when you share a group is that only the references are shared this time, not um, the PDFs um, as well. So I'm going to highlight the group to be shared and right click on it. So you can see I've highlighted ballet and I can share the group. And again, um, I can invite someone. Um, let's see if Alice is in the room. Uh, so I give read and write permission this time. I might say testing again and invite okay. someone. So very easy. You um, need an E in my, my name. Sorry. Oh, sorry, Alice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so I'll remove that. But anyway, you saw the process. Um, I sometimes find it a little hard to do and speak at the same time. So, um, yeah, <laughs> either the words will go, the typing will go, something will go sometimes. So that's how um, I invite someone else um, to one of my groups. But here on the left hand side, you can see an example of the group that Marvin shared with me um, previously. And when I was in EndNote Online, I pointed to that Chiroptera group, and that was the group that um, Marvin um, had shared with me previously. So how you work across these different locations and how you choose to share, whether you use choose to share groups or libraries really depends on how you work, depends on what you need to do. Um, 
if you are a PhD student and you're mostly working on your own project, things might be relatively easy. You might simply have a single EndNote library and you sync it to work across different um, places and that's relatively simple and you might just need to share a group from time to time. Um, but you might be a research assistant or might be someone who has multiple projects and that's where things might get a little bit more complex because as I mentioned in the EndNote online library it's basically one single huge library you haven't got they're not differentiated the only way to differentiate is to use the groups um, so you can share in um, other ways um, when you um, actually choose to compress your library and save I'm not going to do that this minute but you will have an option to email a library so occasionally if you were doing perhaps you were working on a systematic review where you did um, part of the work maybe you did um, the collecting the references deduplicating first screening and then you passed on to another person or another two people to do the next stage but they work independently then you could simply email um, the next stage and then they would work from it so that's one kind of scenario but then there might be scenarios where you all want to work from the same library at the same time and that's where sharing the library sharing a group might be the option that you want to go with okay so that's um part um b that was really around um working with other people Thank <laughs> you.